Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I'm back in southwest Arizona. Back down here on Tony's property in Kingman, or just outside of Kingman. And I'm going to spend a couple of weeks here, uh, maybe into the first week of October, before I go uh, further south to Quartzsite, to my uh, quiet spot where I can get a little solace for a little while and get away from everybody. Looking forward to that. I need that once in a while. I'm kind of a hermit. Always have been, kind of kept to myself. But anyway, uh, escaping the wildfires of Oregon uh, was a long drive down I-5. And uh, the smoke up that way was thick, kind of like a heavy fog, as you can see from the dash cam video here. Uh, it didn't smell too nice, but it wasn't terrible. I wore a mask for most of that part of the drive and didn't cough or anything. My eyes weren't burning. Um, I smoke cigars, so I'm a little bit used to smoke. It didn't bother me that much, but uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, along I-5 between Medford and Ashland, the uh, fire had burnt right up to the highway, and it was like a post-apocalyptic wasteland. There was no place to pull off and take a picture or two, uh, so I don't have any media for you, but the, the news is full of images of the destruction up in Oregon from the fires. But I made it out, um, no problems. Nice, long, uh, very long drive down here, but I'm back and I'm ready to get uh, back to work on some videos. And I want to look at some Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, I've had a, uh, one of my viewers has done a, a ham radio centric Raspberry Pi distribution and we're going to look at that in the next video. But for this one I want to show you my Raspberry Pi 4 rig that I've got set up and uh, talk about uh, some of the things I ran into with it and uh, some of the gotchas and how I got around them. So uh, it's sitting here on the desk. Let's uh, Let's take a look at it. This is my Raspberry Pi 4 configuration. I have here the Raspberry Pi 4 in a little case. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment. And connected to it via USB, I have an external drive enclosure with a terabyte hard drive. Now it's an older drive, it's a spinning disk. And although USB boot has been enabled in the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, I don't think they're quite there yet. There's some timing issues with spinning disks, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this, this display is a great little... Well, it's, it's, just, it's built as a portable gaming display for the Raspberry Pi. But what it is, is it's a full HD 1080p uh, LCD panel with a built-in power supply and USB-C connection that is feeding power to the Raspberry Pi and has enough power to run the hard disk as well uh, and two HDMI inputs that you can switch between headphone output and uh, DC power 12 volts in so this is ideal for my situation I could tie it right into my solar uh, and it runs the display which then powers the uh, Raspberry Pi and I've got a full setup right now it's running uh, uh, the beta of Ubuntu Mate uh, for the Raspberry Pi, which is a, Ubuntu Mate or Mate um, is the desktop environment that I run on my laptop, which I'm quite familiar with. So what I did was I copied my entire home directory over um, onto the hard disk with the full OS install, and I have basically a clone of my working environment uh, from the laptop. And I, I gotta say, it works, it works fairly well. Um, I've been using it for a little while just playing around. Um, I can't edit a video on it. It doesn't quite have the CPU horsepower for that. <laughs> that was one thing I was wondering was would I be able to edit a video on the Raspberry Pi 4? And I kind of can, um, but it, uh, it can't preview in the edits. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Ubuntu beta uh, desktop seems to be working great. It has hardware acceleration. Um, Video playback, like uh, for YouTube here, is is absolutely so fine. We're talking about the different things that are changing in video conferencing software now that it's everywhere. Now that even you know, kind of my parents are video conferencing. All right, we'll pause that. So as you could see in here, um, audio is fine. Video playback is fine. Uh, it's supposed to be able to do full 1080p uh, video playback at a f without dropping many frames. 
I don't have the internet bandwidth to test that with YouTube, uh, but I have run video um, through celluloid or another uh, video player with no problems at all, uh, full screen, full 1080, uh, so the Pi can definitely take it. Um, so yeah, you know, it's actually kind of usable as a desktop environment. Uh, you, you know, it being Ubuntu, it comes with all the software that you'd expect. Um, let me open up an office application. Like let's, uh, let's open up LibreOffice Writer. That's the one that everybody likes to, to open. Now it's running off a spinning hard disk. So it's a little bit slow, about the same speed as you get off of the SD card. If you're running a Pi off the SD card. Uh, but it is workable. Now I am going to be changing the uh, hard disk out. We'll talk about that in a moment. But there's a, a LibreOffice writer loaded right up. So anyway, um, oh yeah, wireless keyboard and mouse, Logitech keyboard and mouse. Has a little dongle that plugs into the Pi. Um, so yeah, uh, gotchas, a uh, USB boot uh, with a spinning disk. Now I went through, I have two other um, hard drive enclosures and uh, I could not get USB boot to work. What happens is, in fact, I'll show you. We'll shut her down. Shut down. Now I am going to pull the uh, micro SD card out and I'll tell you why it's in there in a moment. So there is the micro SD card. The only thing hooked up to the Raspberry Pi right now is the spinning disk. And I'm going to show that to you up close. Okay, so I'm going to power the Pi back on. The uh, hard disk that's hooked up here has the uh, Raspberry Pi image of Ubuntu Mate um, beta on it. I've tried the official Raspbian. I've tried um, Ubuntu server with just the spinning hard disk hooked up with this interface. I get the same result every time. So we'll power it up. And uh, what you'll see happen is while the Raspberry Pi bootloader pops up with an error for a minute, you can see part of it here. It kind of doesn't sync on the display right, but uh, it will see the drive. There it goes. Watch the activity light down here. Well, where's the activity light? Now, well, that's pretty much what happens. We, we saw the, the rainbow splash screen for a minute. It, it read the boot partition off of here and it started the boot up process. And then that's it. It just hangs. Nothing happens. So how did I get around that to get it to boot off of this? Well, on this SD card, the image contains a boot partition and a partition called writable, which is the main operating system partition uh, for, the, uh, for the OS that the Pi is running. So what I did was on the SD card, I renamed the writable partition as SD writable and then plugged it back in and left the hard disk hooked up. And so as the boot process started, it read boot off of this SD card. And then when it went to go to the writable partition, it, uh, there had been enough time had enough time had passed for the hard disk to be fully spun up and mounted and, and visible. Uh, and the, uh, the OS found it and loaded off of it and everything runs. So that's how I got around using a spinning disk with this interface. Now there is a recommended configuration and a recommended interface that does work better for booting the Raspberry Pi off of USB. I'll put the links to it here in the description below on the video. And I have ordered one and I've ordered a one terabyte uh, SSD uh, to use with it for my full rig. So this is just temporary here with the spinning disk. I'm going to be going to a, a full SSD setup using that proper interface for this Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, let's take a closer look at the Raspberry Pi 4 and this case, uh, this Cano kit case that I've got it in and talk briefly about uh, what I did with the uh, cooling fan, a little trick that I ran across that actually does work. 
pardon the fingerprints. This has been handled a lot. Uh, this is a Cano Kit uh, case that comes, well, that you can get for the Pi. It uh, exposes all the ports. Here's the Pi 4. So we've got a USB-C uh, port for power. HDMI 1, HDMI 2. Yes, this can support multiple monitors. AVV output is still there. So you've got your audio and uh, composite video output. All the uh, regular USB ports here and the uh, gigabit Ethernet network port, which is nice. Nothing on that side. On the back, SD card access. Rubber feet on the bottom, air holes. And there's a fan in here. So let me open this up. It's snap fit together. There you can see the Pi 4 in there with the heat sinks. Um, this case does not give you access to the GPIO pins when the lid is on. Well, not directly. Uh, if you were just running a couple of wires to a couple of those pins, you could snake them out through this air gap in the side, most certainly. So you could use, you know, it's like a temperature sensor or something, servo driver or something with this case and still have the lid on and the fan. Now, some of you may have already noticed the way I've got the fan mounted. The uh, label side of the fan is the exhaust side. So I have the fan blowing into the case. Conventional wisdom uh, with case fans is to have the fan exhausting, pulling the heated air out of the case. Well, this is the trick. Um, if you do it that way, it works. You know, sure, it's, it's going to pull the heated air out of the case heat coming off of the heat sinks is going to radiate into the air, get sucked out by the fan, and it will provide cooling. However, if you put the fan blowing inward, then it's taking cool outside air, blowing it down directly onto the heat sinks. So it's directly blowing the cold air onto the heat sinks, moving a lot of air over the heat sinks. And then the air finds its way around to the edge uh, and escapes the case that um, along that edge. That is more effective. Um, the CPU temperature runs about 5 to 6 degrees Celsius cooler when I have the fan blowing inward than when I have the fan blowing outward. So uh, I saw that tip somewhere and I thought that kind of makes sense. I'm going to try it and by golly it does work. Now I have the fan hooked up to the 3.3 volt rail instead of the 5 volt rail. So the fan is running about half the normal speed. Uh, because of it blowing down on the heat sinks, it's providing enough cooling that the Pi, under normal use, stays within the 60 degree to 70 degree Celsius range. Uh, if I really tax it hard, it'll get above 70, but I have not yet been able to push it to 80, and above 80 is where the Pi throttles. So that uh, that's kind of nice. Uh, the fan is quieter, much quieter when it's running slower. Uh, no, no annoying whine bugging you and still providing adequate cooling and the, and the pie runs fine. So this is this little Cano kit case. It, uh, I'll put a link to it in the description as well. Um, nice little case. They have another variant of it that has access on here that, that comes down and leaves the GPI O pins um, accessible, which is still pretty much the same case. But that just snaps together. Nice, uh, nice little convenient case for your Pi 4. So there you go. So that's my Raspberry Pi 4 setup. It's the 8 gig model of the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to use it as a desktop uh, off and on because it's uh, low power. It draws a bit less power than my laptop does. My Lenovo uh, laptop, which is a Core i5. It's an older uh, laptop. But uh, this rig draws about 60% of the power of that laptop. So it's a uh, for my situation being solar on a cloudy day, this will be a nice go-to rig if I just want to watch some YouTube, do some research, catch up on the news, check the weather, and so on. The basic kind of things you do on a computer. Um, this will be fine, uh, absolutely fine and usable as a desktop. Um, office applications, writing, creating documents, uh, graphics, creating things in the GIMP. Um, that's it's fully responsive. Uh, I've done some photo editing with it, and it's it's snappy. Uh, it's fine. And uh, as we saw with the case, uh, that little trick with the fan, 
allows me to run the fan at the uh, on the 3.3 volt rail and it's much quieter uh, it's not there's no annoying whine from it and it still manages to keep the CPU cool enough uh, to operate for you know extended periods of time if I was doing something that really really loaded it down though um, rendering a video file where all, all four cores were at 100% the fan would probably have to be on the 5 volt rail if you're you know, you're doing something that's uh, really taxing the CPU on it, it's going to heat it up and, and you need more airflow. But uh, putting the fan blowing downward onto the heat sinks, much more effective at uh, cooling the uh, Pi, uh, much more effective. Uh, it, night and day difference, really. So anyway, there's that tip. Okay, we'll see you in the next video where we'll take a look at a ham-centric distribution for the Raspberry Pi created by ham four hams. And until then, take care. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.